is Steve Hill, Coach Canada, and Tavon Jacobs. Coach Canada is going to start with an opening statement. Then we're going to take questions for the student athletes first, and then Coach Canada after the students are done. Coach? Tremendous win by our players. A tremendous job. It was a back and forth game. Great credit to Texas. Very good football team. Obviously, we jumped out on them early, and they came back. And we made some mistakes and did some things that didn't go quite as well as we wanted them to go. So, um, great, you know, great credit to that football team and what they're going to do. And then, obviously, tremendous credit to our players for hanging in there, doing doing everything they had to do to win the football game. Uh, you know, I, I just can't say enough about about our players, and everything they've been through, and the way they stuck together. A great way to uh, honor Jordan. Uh, we presented the game ball to Jordan's locker. We'll put it in his locker, and we'll give it to his parents on senior day. But this was a, this was a win for Jordan, and uh, we're certainly uh, proud of proud of our team, proud of our program. Everybody in our building stuck together, so we're proud of everybody. We have a lot of people to pack our parachutes in our building. Our food's always prepared. Our training room's always ready. Everybody's always working. We got a lot of people that care about these players, and they got to. They got to get the pay today. So we're proud of everybody. It was an echo win. You guys can go ahead and ask these guys some questions. Take questions from the players. Please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. We'll start with Dave Ginsburg. Both players, and uh, how tough has it been and how gratifying is it after all you've gone through to put up a win against the ranked team and maybe just for a second put this all behind you? Uh, of course, every win is great, um, but the team just stuck together through this whole course of everything that's happened. Um, and we stayed together. That was our motto, and we stuck by it. Um, from the players to the coaches to the staff, like you said, everybody in the building that packed our parachutes, we all just stuck together, and, and that's the result of today. Uh, just going off of what Tavon said, you know, we're really close knit family. Um, you know, everything that you know has happened this summer, um, as far as closer together, you know, it's the closest I've ever been with. You know, my teammates, coaches. Um, you know, it was just great to get a win, be back out there. You know, it's been a long time since we played a football game. It's just fun to be back out there with everybody. Uh, what were the emotions like pre-game and how did that affect the game? Well, I think, you know, before any football game, there's going to be a lot of emotion. Uh, there's a variety of different emotions. You got your hype people, you got your chill people. But, you know, I just think everybody's, you know, happy to be able to play a football game again. Like I just said, it's been a long time since we played a football game, so it was just Good to be back, back out there with your brothers, um, to go against other people, not bang your head against you know, your teammates every single day. But it was fun to be able to <clears throat> go out there, you know, play against a good opponent, you know, get after it. Bruce? Yeah, Kasim, after your sudden exit last year with the injury, how gratified was it for you to like get back in and be in charge and take over this team and take it to victory? Well, for me, I think, you know, sometimes I don't want to say you take things for granted, but, you know, it's different, you know, not being able to go out there with your brothers and, you know, play a football game. Um, I think today it was just fun to be back out there with everybody. Like, the things that you miss on the sidelines, like, all the emotions, like, all the conversations, just, like, the flow of the game. And, you know, just being out there with those dudes, you know, that's the love of it right there. James. You guys have been looking forward to today for a long time, and obviously, especially in the last month with everything kind of you know, going pretty pretty crazy around you. Um, was it what you expected tonight? Kind of, how did you feel compared to how you thought you would feel? Um, like like I said, just just our model was to, to stick together. So the result of today was just us sticking together uh, day in and day out during during camp. Uh, even now, so that, that was the result. Kasim, what was your assessment of Matt Canada as a head coach today? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> 
Like I said before, it was just good to be able to come back out there, you know, play with everybody. I don't really know Matt Cannon, the head coach, I know him more as Matt Cannon, the offensive coordinator. But it was just good to be able to go out there with everybody, run our new stuff, um, compete against a ranked opponent, and be able to come out with the victory. I mean, the win is all that matters. So we got the win. We have time for two more for the players. Josh. After the weather delay, you guys came out strong, had a few turnovers. What happened during that? Or you caused a few turnovers, you forced a few turnovers. What happened during that weather delay to get you guys stay in the game? Um, we just we just stuck together, and we we, we remember what what Texas said uh, prior to the game, and, and we used that as our as our motivation to to go forth in the fourth quarter. Uh, even if we was on in the hut, like. Even after the, the weather break or before the weather break, we were still using that as our motivation and just sticking together. Uh, last one for the players, we'll both Don. Given what you guys have been through, how much bigger does this win this year seem than the one last year, which was obviously pretty big at the time? And also, what were your impressions of uh, Deshaun Jones? And, and, and did he know what he did? Did, did he understand what he did today? I think any time that you get to go against a big opponent like Texas and then a ranked opponent, you know, a win against them, you know, just solidifies everything, feels good. Um, and then Jay Sean, you know, I think all of the young guys have done great since they've gotten here, whether that was in the winter or when they got here in the summer. Obviously, he had a great game today, and you know, very happy to see that. But I think all the young guys are doing a great job. Of, learning their playbook, executing, and just being about their business, which I think is hard as a young guy coming into college with all the distractions that you can have. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Coach, they, uh, they retook the lead there in the second half. You guys had two big drives, two 11 uh, play marches. What was the difference right before that weather delay and right after? Uh, what were you guys able to take advantage of on those two possessions? Um, I think our guys, you know, I think they did a great job staying focused. We were stopping. I get great credit to Texas, and they did some things that were different. But you know, we were stopping ourselves a little bit. We made some unforced errors at times. Um, See, so I got to do a better job calling some plays. But our kids just kept believing. I thought the one drive, I can't pull it all back exactly what the time was, but we had a false start. I think Jay Sean had a false start. We overcame that and got a first down. When we took a shot on first down, we gave up the sacks. So it's like second and 18. We overcame that, went for it on fourth down and converted. So, obviously, when, you, when you're playing offensive football, it's 11 men doing their job. And the fact that we had two unforced errors, in my opinion, one we jumped and one we didn't block the guy, um, and we still ended up getting a touchdown. That was impressive. And that's a sign of a team that sticks together and believes, right? Very easy to start pointing the finger, and they're not doing that. Jay Brewer, Washington Post. What was it like for you to uh, manage this day? It was atypical from the beginning, and then you get this delay um, right at the start of the fourth. The first quarter, quarter was the longest quarter I've ever. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, you know, I've never, I've always called it from upstairs. So I just was starting to think maybe I'm just that old and out of shape. I've been for a long time standing down there. Um, really, the delay was a part of it. We've all gone through those. Our kids did a great job. Um, for me, I mean, it was different calling it from the field. I mean, you talk about the thing I was the most worried about. It was calling the game from the field. I've never done that. And I didn't want to screw that job up. That's my job. I'm the offensive coordinator. I call the plays. And sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not. But I was concerned about that. So our staff did a great job. You know, the guys upstairs did a great job. That was my biggest, you know, going into the game, that was my biggest concern. Our guys, you know, they have their pregame routine. They were going to do what they do. Our staff, we all know what we're going to do. I just got out of the way, which I always try to do on game day. Jared Goldstein. Coach, Jay Sean with a, a rushing, receiving, and passing touchdown today. What is it about him as a freshman that makes him so versatile that you can use him in all those ways right away? He uh, he is versatile. He's a very good football player. Obviously, you know, the Jets lead part of our offense. A lot of guys ran it, his popped, and then they made some <clears throat> made some adjustments. We did 
we missed some opportunities on that. Obviously, the pass was special. We did after the catch was special. And obviously, the trick play down there in the red zone, we had it. And we kind of auditioned it. We, I think we had three or four guys throw it in practice. His was the best. And we only got it one time, so <laughs> he won. And uh, that's how it went. So uh, he did a great job. It was really good for him, good for our football team. Peter. Coach, uh, uh, hindsight being 2020, um, do you think you may have been too, the play calling may have been too conservative after the two? Turnovers. Yes and no. Obviously, I took a, I took a shot there, and I should have. We had a, we had a personnel deal on the fourth and an inch out, and, and so we were jumbled there. The scene was rushed, and I should have called timeout. So that was bad. And uh, so after that, I didn't want to do anything. Our defense was playing well, and I didn't want to do anything to hurt us. We had we had the the, the, the dart coming across there. The ball just got tipped. I think I think we'd have got a first down there. We had a couple other jets up, so we were trying to use the clock. The last time we had it, certainly we wanted to get them to use all three timeouts. Our, our special teams of defense was great. They, they got a little more on that punt than we wanted, but every other one we did a great job. So, yeah, maybe. But then if I'd have thrown a pass and didn't complete and they'd have had more time, you probably would ask me why you did that, right? So, and I'm not being, I'm not being, I mean, I'm just saying that was in my mind. I was going to make him make him use all three timeouts. We thought we had a shot to get a first down. We ran the one jet and we just fell off. Um, so, I, I don't think so. But since we won, I'll, I'll stick to it. <laughs> Pat right in the front. Coach, um, <clears throat> regarding the uh, platooning that occurred a little bit at quarterback and also at uh, the offensive tackle positions, um, what was the, I guess, thinking that went behind that? Is that something that we can expect moving forward? At Kasim, that quarterback, you know, the quarterback, uh, Kasim and Pig are, uh, are great players. They're both really good. I, you know, I've, I've been part of that one other time when I was in Northern Illinois with, with Harnish and Lynch. We did it a little bit. Certainly, Chandler was was the primary player. Uh, you know, there's things that Pig brings to the table. He had a couple good runs, and he took a shot. We we took a shot to uh, Avery there in the red zone, and we just missed it. It was a good play. And I feel like it adds a quarterback run or something defensive staffs don't like to see. So with that and all the other things we do, I think that helps us. That tackle Derwin was ready to go pregame, and uh, he just didn't feel right. Obviously, he's coming off with you know an injury and. Um, he just practiced all week, and he just revved it up and didn't feel like he could go. So then Marcus had to play, which was great. We were prepared for that. Marcus Miner had a tremendous spring and fall. He was a very, very good football player. And then he got nicked up a little bit, so he came out because of that, and then he went back in the game. So that's what happened there. We had a six lineman package going. Ellis was playing tight end, so, um, and we didn't get to do that as much because we you know, ended up going down two guys. But that, that was the tackle part wasn't quite maybe playing, but but we were prepared for that. Don, that way. Matt, for for a defense that has been up off in the line and to come up with the three turnovers at the end of the game, what can you say about it? And what was the difference at the end of the game to make those plays? Our players weren't going to be denied. So like I said, I great credit to our defense. I put them in a bad spot on the sneak on the 40-yard deal, and really we put them in a bad spot. And we put it on the ground, you know, on the safety, and then we didn't punt it very well after the safety. So they had two short field touchdowns in. Um, but they played very, very well. They played together. They found a way to get it done. So I don't, I don't know what was different other than they were just – there was a real focus. There was a real focus on this football team to win this game. And uh, we talked about our room, our building, and everybody else outside of our building really doesn't matter. They really don't matter. And, and that's, how we're, that's how we plan. That's how we focus. And, that's not being mean or however you want to spin that, but only people in our, in the, that knew how we were going to play with the guys in our building. And I think they had no doubt they were going to win. They convinced me, because I can get nervous about just about anything. They convinced me. And just to follow up, what, what about the parachutes they're talking about? Um, that's something we talk about with our staff and uh, with, our, with our program. We practice your parachute. There's a Navy, so you guys have probably read it. You guys have probably done something we've done for a few years around where I've been. And, just talk about the people who are in our program that do so much for us, right? Football is the greatest game in the world. It takes so many people. Like, I mean, we talk, we come in, our food's ready. One time we don't notice that something's wrong in the, in the, in the areas, but it's not ready when we walk in, right? Trainers are ready. Shrimp staff is ready. Academics is ready. Everybody's there for our players. And having them acknowledge that and understand that, they're the ones, they're the stars, and they should be. They do, they do all the work. But it's, but it's been really good. So they, a lot of them wrote letters to them, thanked them for what they do for them. We had some books, some uh, posters that they all signed, and they, they really got into. It. Obviously, you know, they, they both they talked about. It. So I'm proud of them for that. There's a lot. There's a lot of people involved in this deal. For the defense, 
Uh, who took care of the defense on the field, and if you can say it, who was calling the defensive plays today? They worked together. Obviously, they worked on this staff, for, or this staff, this, this uh, plan for a long time. We knew we were playing Texas for a long time, right? So all of them as a staff worked together. Um, you know, Coach Barnes was, was on the field kind of doing that, but then if it's third down with you know special teams, he would get pulled away. So Jimmy and Azar both helping on the field too. Chuck and Andy were upstairs, and you know I listened, and but I didn't do anything else. I did just you, listened once in a while. Did you watch the whole game, or are you more concerned with the offense today? I well, I, I don't ever normally watch the defense at all. It just gets me mad. Um, <laughs> Either way, either they stop them and I'm, we don't score, so I'm mad. Or so I, but obviously, I felt like I had to. You know, we, we had a timeout we needed, so I had to pay attention. But I was still trying to stay out of it. Again, I'm, I'm focusing on the offense. I've met with the old defense sitters about three times now, but I've met with the players. They know where I'm at, care about them, they know where we are. That's the general message of our football team. But I'm focused on the offense, and those guys did a great job. We've got time for two or three more. Uh, how important was it to the team to start with 10 players on the field for that first play? Very important. And, uh, you know, thank Tom for that, for allowing us to do that. And they obviously declined the penalty, and that was a class move by Texas. Uh, that's something those guys wanted to do. Um, they wanted to go out there and, and make sure, you know, Jordan was remembered. And we did that. And uh, that was all. Again, our players, everything we've done to honor Jordan is from our players. They're the ones who decided it, talked about it, and. Uh, that was special. It was emotional. It's emotional right now. We start talking about it. We're out of our players. A couple questions, Coach. Uh, number one, this is actually only Cassim's second or third game. Right. No turnovers. Thirty-four points. How do you describe that? And second of all, was that the best scripted first series you ever had? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, he scored, which is good. Uh, but Kasim, you know, he's he's a, he's got it. I said it a lot. Kasim's got it. And he's talking about quarterbacks. What is it? I don't know. Some guys got it. Some guys don't. He's got a great knowledge of the game. You know, he made a couple mistakes. You know, coming out again, he was a little late on the you know, the safety play there, which was too bad. I think we had a shot at a big one. Uh, but you know, it's not like he came over and threw a fit. He was frustrated. He came over. He came back and played. You know, we talked about the question about rotating. Some quarterbacks would have an issue, right, if you're going back and forth. Those two guys, are, they want to win. And they both want to play like everybody. we got six backs who all think they should you know, carry the ball 40 times a game. We've got the wideouts who all think they should have 40 catches a game. I mean, it's, we got a lot of good players. There's only one ball. But uh, the way Kasim, and I'm going to give it to Pig, too, and Max. Max, you know, Max started a lot of football games, and now he's sitting there. I mean, those three kids are they're, they're sticking together, and they're special. But Kasim did a nice job. He's a pretty cool dude, though. He's a pretty cool dude. He missed a throw. Obviously, you know, he, he came off. Got bumped up a little bit, came out, went right back in. Proud of it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hey, all right, thank you.